Hello, everyone. This is QCC, Quarantine Chronicles and Creations. My name is Dr. Joy, and our special guest today is Dr. Beth. So, Dr. Beth, can you introduce yourself to the people? Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Milligan, and I'm an emergency room doctor. I've also been a lady health doctor. I was a designated ladies health doctor, so I have done a lot of women. I've delivered babies in my life, done a little bit of all that. But basically, right now, my title is an emergency room physician. Okay, and since we are still in the COVID, you are in the state of Arkansas. Yes. And as a, an ER doctor, can you share with the audience maybe some of what you're seeing and what percentage on any given day, what percentage of your patients are COVID patients? Well, uh, initially on when this all started back in March, and, and to let you know, I'm actually a, a backup doctor. So I go in when they need extra doctors. So I'm not there every day, which okay. is fine for me. But so when I go in back in early March, I went in, truthfully back in January and February, we were seeing really sick people, but nobody called them COVIDs. But I looking back on it, there were people that tested negative for flu that were really sick. But Starting in March in those first early weeks, we get we we bring in the worst ones. We'll have anywhere from thirty to fifty people walk up to be tested. Now the ones when they get when they're severely bad, severely ill, can't breathe, that's when they come into the emergency room. So I the last day I worked was Wednesday, and I had two severely ill COVID patients in the emergency room. There were you know breathing issues that we put into the negative pressure rooms. I had two Wednesday, so we're still seeing them in our state. Okay, and so is Arkansas still on lockdown? Are there still restrictions? What's going on there? Uh, we, Arkansas, we did, we never went on a lockdown. We're one of the few states that our our governor asked us to try to shelter in place, and the non essential businesses were told to try to not do it, and all the essentials remained in place. Uh, there was no court orders requiring anybody to do anything. They just were told to use, you know, the best sense they could. So you could still get out. Right now we're on, we're, we're in the process of phase one headed into phase two, meaning that they started having church services that were very limited and the number of the people that could go in there, the schools still are, you know, closed down, but you can get out using proper, uh, you know, safety precautions. Okay, so before we go any further, I just want to say thank you for what you do. And um, I want people to understand that it's a lot because you have a family, you have friends that, that need you. So um, it's a lot for you to, to, to put yourself in, in on the front line for those of us who may or may not be listening or, or, or adhering to what needs to be done. So let me segue into the mask part. I have some had some people state to me, that, you know, I'm not going to wear a mask. What does it matter? If it's my time, it's my time. What are your thoughts on that? Oh my gosh. I've learned more over the last few days, how heated topic this is. So I'm probably going to have to tell you me personally and decided that I'm not going to place, you know, harsh judgment on my friends that have a totally opposite opinion. But I'll tell you where I believe and where I state, and it's based on science, really. Uh, first of all, I wear a mask in the hospital because I am seeing COVID patients. We know they are. They're in there. They can't breathe. Many of them are. When you see a patient struggling to breathe and they have COVID, that's a very, very, very frightening thing. So you know people can get really, really bad fast. So when I go in there, I'm wearing a full an N95 mask. I actually wore an N95 mask, a mask on top of that one, and a hood over my head with oxygen in the back and a gown on two sets of gloves. That's what I wore going into a COVID room. That's because the amount of virus that is kicking out of them when they cough. And I leaned over this man's face Wednesday. He coughed in my face, but I'm wearing this hood six section. Now I had all this on and I was safe. That cruel hood protected me from those particles of that virus. Now I, for sure, the virus is so small that no mask will really protect you from that full um, you know, onslaught of that, what we call viral load, that full amount of mucus and all that crap coming up in your face. And that's true. No mask is going to really be effective enough to stop that. That's why I'm wearing three things on my face to protect myself. I don't want to get it. <laughs> so now, 
with that being said, let's step out. And I'm now going to go out and I'm out in the world. And there's a lot of people that are, as, as they say, and we know this now for a fact, and I could, I could prove it, but I don't want to argue it because I'm seeing everybody post things that are totally off the wall. Now, we found that up to two days before you get sick with it, you can shed that virus. That virus been coming out of your body. You ain't got no fever. You feel just fine. You look just like me and you, but yet that virus can be coming off of me. Let's say I picked it up in that emergency room and I didn't have, I touched my face when I got outside of the room and got the, got the virus. Now I go to Walmart. I'm now shedding that virus. Okay. Two days. I'm, I feel just fine. I don't know. You wouldn't know, but you go into Walmart. If I'm not wearing a mask and I sneeze, touch my face, and I'm standing anywhere within six foot of you in Walmart, I'm going to give it, probably give it to you because you can't see the sneeze. Or, <laughs> or I actually touch the, the I'm going to touch the, the, you know, what I'm buying, the bread, but I don't want that. I'm going to go touch the next bread, and you come up and touch that bread, and then you go like this, you go and get the virus, and you will because it's five times more contagious than the, the flu anywhere from four to five times i could prove all that. i mean that's proven we've done the studies we know that so that's how easy it is yet you and i both felt just fine we went to kroger walmart or all the places y'all have up in your state you probably have some at costco i don't know what you less any of those anything okay. Like, okay. i could go to okay so now i've got my point okay now, why I believe I'm still wearing a mask right now when I go to Walmart is because two reasons. When I'm in the hospital, the kind of mask I'm wearing protects me and you, okay? Right. Because okay. I have an N95 plus those double masks. They, they protect both of us. But if I go into Walmart, my job now is to protect everybody around me because I have worked in the hospital. I'm assuming I don't, but I don't know. And for several more weeks, we don't know a lot more, and it may be months. So I'm actually going to one of two things. Now, I have this mask. This is a surgical mask, and okay. it's real light. It's easy to breathe through. I'd put this one on, pitch it around my nose, and I'll go into Walmart with this on. Now, if I, <coughs> I'm going to decrease the amount of mucus coming across the uh, from me. I try not to cough, but if I do, it's stopping it here. Now, okay. you hear a lot of myths, people saying, oh, you're going to reinfect yourself. That's not true. You can't reinfect yourself with something you're already infected with. That's baloney. I've okay. read those things in, in social media, okay? So okay. this protects it, and this will decrease the amount of virus that you're going to get exposed to called viral load, okay? And old people are saying, oh, you get hypoxic, or you breathe too much carbon dioxide in these things. Oh, my Lord. There's nurses that wear these for 12 hours a day. This is nothing more than a surgical mask, and I breathe just fine through it. Okay. Now, people say, oh, you touch your face more. Yeah, I might, and I have. I've reached up, but I don't. When I touch my face, and I'm aware when I do, I'm washing my hands. I carry spritzer, and I'm sorry I don't have that with me to show you what I'm doing, but I carry spritzer with me in my car, and I have a small bottle that I carry that's got a two-shot in my pocket. So when I touch, oh, okay, and I spritz my hands. I know at that point, my hands are not safe because this is the number two. This right here, these are the most important things to wash these hands constantly. So I wash my hands before in the car. I have a spritzer. Before I put my mask on, I wash my hands. I put the mask on. When I take the mask off, I wash my hands again. I'm assuming I have touched my face, okay? Because most people that wear these outside the hospital are not medical professionals and they're not, to, not, they're not trained in it, okay? Right. My other favorite mask, this one. I had actually, because guys, I've had cancer in my life. <clears throat> and when I had certain medications and things that made me immunocompromised, I had to wear a mask. Okay. And a lot of cancer patients, this is a part of our lives. So I have a nicer mask that I had already had long before COVID that has an N95 filter in it. Okay. And I put this one on. It's a little harder to breathe on, but it's got a little filter here on it, if you can see. And I can breathe easier in it. And then this is the one I wear. In other places. Okay. You probably can't hear me, but that's the one I wear a lot. I put it on mainly because guidelines say those of us that work in healthcare are higher risk to carry it to people. Okay. I don't want to give it to somebody, but the reason you wear a mask is to protect everybody around you. So the story of, oh, well, I got to get something and die. Trust me, your, your chances of getting COVID and dying are a whole lot higher than anything else in these hot spot areas. Wow. So you don't want it. And the, the thing is, 
if you say 80% of the people who get COVID will do just fine, they will. They'll just get a pretty bad cold. Okay. But of that, then you're going to break it down. You've got another 20% that's going to get pretty sick. And of that 20%, 5% of those will end up on the ventilator. Right. So that's a high odds when you're talking about if you can prevent something, exactly. why die of a preventable thing? And so that, that's my take on it, mainly because I feel like it's my moral obligation. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm pretty much a faith-based person, and I believe that, that I'm supposed to love people around me and protect them. So even though I may not feel like I need a mask, I care about the people around me. And a lot of people are afraid and terrified right now. So a mask is a comfort to, to a lot of people that go, oh, yeah, she coughs around me or whatever. I know I'm not going to get it, the mucus all over me. So I do it because I feel like it's the right thing to do. And I know a, a lot more information on it. So that's why I do it. I don't do it because the governor told me to or because the government told me to. I do it because I know my heart told me to do it. Does that make sense? It does. I love it. I love it. It's the the one little thing I can do to help the people around me, you know, just to make the people around me feel like I care about them. I love that. I love that. So let's talk a little bit about, I heard that you have a farm. (laughs) So let's (laughs) let's talk about what kind of animals you have on your farm. Yeah. Well, I can probably, if I didn't have to step away, I've, I've actually got two baby geese. They're African geese in, in the, in the right over here. They're not big enough to put outside yet because they need some more feathers on them. And they're so, at nighttime, it's still getting a little chilly. So they're under heat lamp. I have three dogs, probably 30 chickens and maybe eight, eight uh, geese, African geese, and probably another eight ducks, peacock ducks. And then I, we raise bees out there. Do I have anything else? Oh, yeah, I, I rescue turtles. And we take turtles that have been injured, and I help turtles. Yeah, our other injured animals. But mainly my expertise is in the turtles. Wow, wow. So we're talking, in this series, we're still talking about relationships and the commitment. So um, um, how do pets help with mental health? And especially during these times, how can you link? that um with depression maybe or anxiety how do pets help there well i I mean i'll personally say uh i mean speaking as a doctor i mean i personally have dealt with severe you know deep sadness uh during this time because i go home and i may see people that are struggling then i I get really 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 sad just that and it's hard to shake sometimes to get you know to go to sleep at night and to rest so there's a couple of things i do um I, I, with three dogs, I have one that's kind of my personal, I say my, my companion dog. Okay. Um, I take, his name is Dexter. He many times will go by my bed at nighttime and lay down by my bed. And uh, uh, he, he has gotten in the bed. My husband said he shouldn't, but he does get in the bed and we, we will cuddle. And I just kind of, he loves me unconditionally. So I really kind of spend a lot of time with him. And, um, so I, you know, I go to bed that way and he, he keeps, he keeps, he calms me down before I go to sleep. And then in the morning we get up and we, and we start our day. So for me personally, I believe my dog has helped me in ways that no human can because my dog is unconditional. He doesn't judge me for the stupid things I do or say. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I never say anything. They're there regardless. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. So for people who are not just dealing, let's say you may have a family member or a friend, um, is this a good time to go get a dog or get a pet? Well, or you know what? Now I'm very pro rescue of all animals, but you know I think the shelters are trying to help people one on one. There are volunteers that will, and yes, I think if you're prepared, it might be a good time to get a pet. Uh, you know, and there's more than just dogs. Um, but yes, I don't think it's a bad time. I mean, you, you want to think about it and not do it over a one minute time period. You know, oh, I need a dog because I'm depressed. But I mean, I, I work at I work at the government level and we work with veterans who are extremely depressed. And so there's a lot of uh, service dogs that come into play. So I everything I've ex- ever experienced has is, is been a dog or a cat or anything else saving someone's emotional life like that. So 
you've said things done. You don't have to be a soldier. You can just be a human being that needs needs a pet to help fill that void. And you fill that void in the animal's life. So I'd have to say it's probably not a bad idea to contact your shelters because they're starting to help people now uh, get in with the dog. And I'd probably head to a shelter because some of them do have dogs in there that are actually very trained or, or can be. They're very calm. They just need uh, need uh, someone to love them. Yeah, and, and with people being impacted financially, they may have ended, the, the animal may have ended up in the shelter, not yes. as an ideal basis. I mean, I guess. Yeah, I've were. heard that. I've heard that, yes. Um, okay, so other other benefits of, of pets, I've heard and I've read that they, they help with the loneliness. Even with the smaller children, they help them with their discipline and being more, um, helping with their self-esteem. Um, it, it, do you find that this is true also? And maybe what advice would you give to a parent who is trying to maybe help their child cope now? Um, what advice as far as getting an, an animal with the parent? Sure. sure. I mean, the, the parent <clears throat> definitely would need to have the ch- child involved in the decision making as far as, you know, the type of pet and um, also naming, perhaps naming the pet and then daily responsibilities of feeding that pet, watering that pet, brushing the pet, walking the pet, which, you know, moves you into the other category of exercise. My dog and I walk this farm together and we can get a lot of exercise together because you can walk your animal on leash or whatever. I mean, I mean, we walk this farm a lot and I get out and do my chores, feeding the chickens and he's out there protecting me from all the monsters that might come around while we feed the animals and uh, the other animals. He helps me take care of the, and he guards, you know, he's the guard dog. But yes, exercise is another area that, because exercise helps depression. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, getting up and walking, it will make you take a deep breath and get your heart rate moving a little bit more. And when that's moving, that, that, ex, that will actually stimulate the endorphins in your body that are there supposed to be. And the endorphins make you just feel like you need to get up and, and, and have a better day. Now, I saw a post a couple of days ago. There was a snake. So that wasn't a pet snake. That was just a snake, right? Well, you you talking my Facebook? Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, yes, I rescue animals. And it was uh, a king snake uh, that I had found in the duck pen. And I thought it didn't need to be there. So I just pulled it out. And I said, hey, guys. Don't kill these animals. And I played around with it and looked at it, took some pictures, and then I moved it to a safer location. So I don't kill something just because it's where it doesn't need to be. And so, yeah, I, I rescue. And I, I mean, I love I love God's creatures, so I don't want them to be harmed. And I move them to safer areas. That, that makes me feel better. If I can't help a human necessarily way off in another state, like in New York that's suffering, I'm so worried about those people. But if I see anyone around me, people around me or animals around me that needs help, that helps me by helping those animals, even a snake. Okay, but let me ask you this. Is it possible that a snake could be a good companion during this time? Yes, uh, believe it or not, and that is the truth, but that's usually people who are very, very well you know, know it's how to handle a snake. Now, I'd re- probably recommend more of a turtle or p- perhaps, you know, so you can get turtles at the pet store and they're easier to take care of. Make sure you know the proper environments and get some coaching on that. They, they're, they're much, they can take time, but they could, you know, if you're not a high maintenance person, you may just want a, want a turtle. But yes, some people do get snakes as their therapy. I, I'm, it's not me, who's in me to judge? That, that they're really cool. My turtles bring me great joy and taking care of them. So yeah, I could argue that. Yep. I've heard there was a guy that had a goose and I have two geese and my geese right now. I hold them geese and you never know what make bring, bring joy into your life. You, you know, who knows? That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. So um, we've talked about the ER experience and what um, patients or, or family members should or shouldn't do by suggestion of course we're not mandating anyone do any one particular thing that is not the case we just want to offer... make more stress more stress in your life for sure yeah um we want to offer some advice and suggestions for everyone and then we talked a little bit about the pets and how they can help with the anxiety and the stress level and the depression right. if 
you are dealing with something personally right now, and maybe a pet is not um, in your budget, what other um, options are there that you can advise or share with the audience, Dr. Beth, for people who are dealing with anxiety or depression or stress? You, know right you just went way off topic here, but you opened the door, and I'm going to tell you what I do. I actually play music. I'm not any good at it, but I have like, I got an Irish whistle and they're like $15. And I got on YouTube and started playing Irish tunes with the with it. I play my whistle. I play guitar. I play different instruments. Or if you don't want to play at all, you get on YouTube and you sing with somebody. So music is very much, and I know that's a whole nother topic, but you asked and I do enjoy it. And yes, I was doing that yesterday and my dog was listening trying to, you know, bark when I was playing their wrong tunes. But yes, I was playing my little Irish whistle right along on YouTube. Makes me blow, gets me up, gets me going, breaks my, my pep going. It doesn't cost much of anything. If you don't have the whistle, sing. Okay, okay. And, and I, I mean, sing I I mean, my dog. There's the other option you could write or draw yeah. or paint. Those are other, right. other okay. ways. Yeah. I, you know, yes, I do. I do all of that. I, I paint. I've got a couple of things I've painted out here. I'm not very good at it, but I do it. You don't have to be good to do it, do you? No. <laughs> I, well, no, you I don't. need to stop doing everything I'm doing because, yeah. Okay, so what advice maybe for someone who wants to volunteer? Is this a good time to volunteer in the hospitals now? Is, it, do, is there nope. still any? I think the places they're going to limit volunteers in the hospitals right now, but I'll tell you where they're taking volunteers is a lot of the food shelters, okay. the food shelters, yeah, pan, food pantries. I should not food shelter food pantries because I went by a pantry and they're all wearing masks, but they still having to feed people during this time. And I, my chickens donated four dozen eggs. They said, Beth, would you take these to the food pantry? So I loaded them all up, put my mask on and I, the ladies met me with their mask on and I passed off eggs to the people. So they could have food. And so I think this is a great time to look for that. And yes, there are there are opportunities in every state. Sometimes it may mean if you can't leave your house and you're really sick and you're afraid to leave and not even to go to the food pantry, as you figure out who is at home alone and you call that person, you reach out and you touch that person. If you can't do that, then you mail cards. I mail cards to people and a lot of our nursing homes are shut down and they can't leave the nursing home. They can't. So Dexter, my dog's laying on the floor here and, and we, we made pictures of us and we put them in a card and we mailed them to several people in nursing homes that can't leave their home. They'll leave their shelter, their areas they're locked in. And if you can't, then call them on the phone, call your friends. You never know who needs that human voice to say, I care about you and I want to know what you're doing today. Let's talk. Let's laugh. Find something to laugh about because laughter is very healing. So we'll find something to laugh about. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I know that you've shared a lot, but did you want to end on in any specific words, maybe any other advice you want to give to the audience or um, a saying or just something you want to share? Gosh, you know, um, I mean, I, like I, I did say, I'm a very faith-based person. So I, I look at a higher being for that. So. I mean, I don't want to get in trouble, but I always say God's got this. And I just say that, that, that we're, there's somebody in control and that ultimately we're going to be blessed after we get through this horrible situation. And we will, we are, I believe this with my deeply in my heart, we're going to get through this and we're going to be stronger and better. And we'll be able to look for ways to help other people and tell people that we love them because we need to start telling people we love them a lot. And I agree. I agree. And for the and and how much we appreciate them, regardless of how small um, the yeah. task is, we need to we need to share that too. So absolutely. Um, well, thank you again. I appreciate you coming on and and sharing your wisdom with the audience and your expertise. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for asking me. I had a lot of fun. Thank you and. Um, if you have any questions or you have any follow-up questions, feel free to make a comment or a post below this. And I'm sure Dr. Beth will get back with you or I can send yeah. a message to her. You can send yeah. me an email. So if you have any follow-up um, questions or comments, feel free to share. Um, everyone, thank you so much. It's yeah. a great day to have a great day. 
Um, Amen. This has been Quarantine Chronicles and Creations QCC, and my name is Dr. Joy. Have a great one. Bye. In this episode, we discussed pets and mental health. Keep in mind that pets can help with depression, anxiety, help relieve stress, help deal with loneliness, and pets can also increase self-esteem. Pets can also improve cardiovascular health by encouraging exercise. Pets provide unconditional love and companionship, not just for the young people, but the elderly too and anyone in between. Dr. Beth has offered some suggestions and some possible steps to take for everyone. We respect your decision to wear a mask or not wear a mask, but ultimately it is my goal that everyone just stay safe, be mindful, and stay encouraged during these times. And here is my contact information, phone number 910-390-2765. You can call or text that number or email me at joy at joylo.com. Take care. This has been QCC, Quarantine Chronicles and Creations. My name is Dr. Joy.